Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of Dealing with Difficulty. Today's episode, we want to talk about dealing with difficulty regarding fasting since we are in the month of Ramadan. So this is the month of fasting. You know, it's a pillar of Islam. And just like there are other pillars of Islam, people sometimes don't even think that it's important to fast. They're excited about Ramadan coming in. Oh, Ramadan is coming in. Ramadan is coming in. They quit sinning and they plan to sin once Ramadan is over. Many people do that. They do the right things because it's Ramadan and immediately after Ramadan, they already plan that we are going to stop doing the right thing. So what you need to know, that's a difficulty. That's a hardship in the sense that we need to do better. I need to do better. You need to do better. Fasting, if I were to tell you that it has health benefits such that it improves your heart, it improves your gut, it improves your mind, it improves your sleep, it improves your general well-being. If I can prove that to you medically, everybody will fast because they know there is a benefit that I can physically feel. Allah says, I know what benefits there are, but I don't want to tell you. I just want you to follow my instruction. And you need to know there are sophisticated things that you will benefit both in this world and things you may never realize you will benefit in the hereafter that you get from fasting. Look at how people do intermittent fastings on earth today because medicines arrived at a point where it's told us that intermittent fasting is extremely healthy for you as a whole. But when Allah tells you to fast from dawn to dusk for a month of Ramadan, people sometimes don't even take it seriously. By right, we should be fasting every Monday and Thursday because those are the sunnah days to fast every week taught by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but not made an obligation. Or we, we can also add to that or we can fast the 13th, 14th and 15th of every lunar month. Another teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but it's not made compulsory. The month of Ramadan, compulsory. You have no option. You have to fast. So we need to start off from a young age trying to fast. I normally tell the children, you know what, those before the age of maturity and puberty, under the age of 15, who have not yet reached maturity, we tell them, why don't you try fasting half a fast today and another half tomorrow? And then you join the two. By the end, you'll have made 15. I know, you know, that's not a valid fast, but it's a means of encouraging children so that they can actually look forward to it. I know many children who fast and they're excited about the iftar. Allah gives people a point where you're opening the fast of joy. That's in the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, Allah gives you two points of joy. The point where you are opening your fast or the point of uh, Eid. And when you meet your Lord, you'll be happy, very happy. Why? Allah says, I want you to abstain from something that you do usually, that's generally permissible for my sake. I want you to stay away from it. Why? It will polish you up in a different way altogether. It will give you discipline. You know, for me, if I've got money and I walk into the store, I can buy whatever I want. Allah says, control. What do you need? Don't be extravagant. Don't waste. Don't be wasteful. Allah says being wasteful and extravagant is equivalent to being a brother or brethren of the devil. May Allah forgive us. So I shouldn't. How am I going to get that restraint? Well, if you fast properly in Ramadan, you will automatically be restrained because what it does, you see, we have biceps and triceps. Many people, they flex their muscles and they, they actually do weights in order to uh, build their biceps. But there is a different type of exercise to build your triceps. If you don't have a proper back and front muscles that are developed, you'll have back aches. You'll have different pains, but you're building your muscle because you're not doing it properly. You've built one, but not the other. Allah wants you to build yourself holistically. He instructs you to do certain things, you do them, that builds the spiritual biceps, if I can call it that way. When he tells you not to do certain things, it's the opposite. You are building your spiritual triceps. I'm just giving you an example, right? So now that you have both, you are, you are strong in a holistic way. So if you did not know or did not train yourself to be able to abstain from things that are displeasing to Allah, Anything and everything that comes in front of you, you think, well, I've got the money, I've got this, I've got that, I've got the power, the energy, the ability, let me go do it. So you commit every sin there is in the market and you don't bat an eyelid. The reason is you don't fast. Anyone who can't control themselves, there's a problem with their fasting.
Allah tells you, I want you to abstain from certain things because I want to train you for the rest of your life. So Allah says, fasting has been prescribed upon you. Let's read the verse. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتِ Allah says, O oh, you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you like it was upon those before you in order that you achieve piety, God consciousness, closeness to Allah, proper connection with Allah. Allah says it's just a prescribed time. It's a fixed time, one month. So Allah knows. I always say if Ramadan was longer, we wouldn't enjoy it. If it was shorter, we wouldn't enjoy it. But it's exactly the right time. Allah wants to train you. So habit building. What am I doing? Building habits. I'm building a habit. It's an honor to fast. You have to make sure you understand. And when you are fasting, please ensure that you eat what is healthy. Get up in the morning for suhoor. Enjoy it. Have a little bit. Have some liquid. Balance your diet. Don't eat too much because the enzymes will actually make you even more hungry at a point where maybe it's just midday. But when you eat less, you're, you, you enjoy the whole fast. You're, you're energetic. You have the energy. And when you open your fast at the end of the day, don't glut yourself. You need to make sure that you eat a date, have a bit of water, you pray, you come back, you have something healthy. I'd like to be campaigning against fries and all the other unhealthy food. Maybe a little might be okay, but try and do away with anything that's oily, unhealthy and so on. I know in some cultures that's what iftar is all about. Fair enough, but control yourself. Have a little. Don't overdo things. When you overdo things, you won't enjoy the fast. But if you're having difficulty fasting, the hardship where you're feeling lazy, you need to do something about it yourself. Make sure from a young age you're dedicated. Use your energy in the correct way through the day. Be focused upon the fact that there is a great reward for the ones who fast. The Prophet ﷺ says there is a door of paradise, especially for those who fasted dedicatedly. It's known as Ar-Rayyan. Especially for those who fasted dedicatedly. If you can abstain from what is generally permissible, Surely it becomes easier to abstain from that which is prohibited. What a beautiful habit building month. It builds a habit. In fact, I can quickly let you in on a few other habits that are built in the month of Ramadan. Your prayer, your Quran, your, your, your adhkar, your you know, daily supplications and the remembrance of Allah, your charities, so many other things. You get used to it in the month of Ramadan. It's habit building. Habit building. So this is the best month of the whole year. It polishes you. It makes you a better person. It gives you an opportunity to rehabilitate and to build the correct habits. That is why when you come out of Ramadan, the hadith says, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ A person who was serious about Ramadan, the fasting and the standing in prayer, they are forgiven every sin that they've committed in the past. Totally wiped out. Because... It's a beautiful habit-building month, like a correctional services. You know, one hadith says that uh, the devil is tied up. Yes, there, there is difference of opinion as to exactly how and who and what. But in general, the devil is tied up in Ramadan. Unfortunately, do you know what? He, he messes with us, even from wherever he is tied up. We need to realize that Allah wants to emancipate us. Allah wants to release us from the shackles of the devil by giving us an opportunity to build ourselves. It's like, I know I've got a massive uh, heavyweight title and I'm practicing, I'm practicing. I practice for the whole month and I'm building myself and energizing and using and learning and training and training for the day I'm going to meet with my Lord. Subhanallah. As soon as Ramadan is over, my reward is plugged in. The devil comes in, I'm going to Bash him completely. Shaitan, I'm not going to obey him. Look at this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it beautiful for us to fast. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.